so far we've been looking at share prices which we model as log normal so there's a trend term and there's your noise term interest rates though are more complex they're not just a price so you know the share would go s is equal to trend term plus noise but for many products we need the entire yield curve so the yield curve is the interest rate at different points so if you lend someone money for two years there's a market price for that if you lend them money for five years there's a slightly higher price typically since your money is tied up for five years so you can't describe everything you know the whole yield curve by just one number now the thing that we're talking about is a whole set of prices actually it's given by a line so a continuous set of numbers the volatility is also not constant along the yield curve so the two-year point moves up and down in a certain way but the five-year one moves up and down in a different way so the volatility is different how do you capture all of that not only that but they're used to discount the price as well by that I mean the interest rate so when you discount your future earnings say with share prices you'd use the risk-free interest rate but if you're modeling the interest rate then how do you do that so that's just giving an impression of how interest rates are different to just modeling share prices like we've been doing so far so firstly if you look over here and from many sources we can see that it says th that the global bonds market is valued at 157 trillion compared to the global stock markets valuation at 54 trillion so the bond market is roughly three times the size of the stock market so you hear a lot about stocks how oh they've hit new highs uh, there's this company blah 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 but the bonds are where the money is here at Bloomberg we can see what the interest rates are so when the US government goes out there and says oh I want to borrow 500 billion or I don't know what size they operate on but it would be billions at an auction they're charged 0.625 percent or 0.63 percent I suppose if, if we're looking at the yields since there are people who are happy to lend them the money at that rate likewise when they want money for five years they're having to pay 1.63 percent as you said you know the longer if you want money for longer periods of time you're typically charged more since otherwise you just do loans of two years and lend them that money again after two years you have the increased flexibility or you have you have increased flexibility if you do it that way compared to the five year where it's locked away and if it's true for five years ten years is a bigger commitment and 30 years is bigger still 
So that's your typical yield curve, you know, that it gets higher and higher. Unfortunately, you also get inverted yield curves. For that, we can just look at the Greek situation, since today is where we've just had the referendum in Greece, and it looks like it's going to be a no. So there's a lot of uncertainty in Greece, uh, whether they'll, what's going to happen, will they be able to pay off the money they've borrowed? Um, yeah, there's lo a large amount of uncertainty there. And we can see here that around about end of 2014, the yield curves inverted. So green is 10 years, blue five years, orange three years. And orange was the lowest rate, then blue, then green, which is your normal setup. But at the end of 2014, it flipped and has remained flipped since. So now people are worried about, yes, you might, you might pay me lots of money, but actually I don't think you'll actually pay me back. So there's a lot of risk. If Greece wants money, why would you lend them the money? Because there, there is a definite risk that you won't get your money back. So if we now look at the rates, it's near 30%. How are the, the Greeks supposed to operate? If you were charged 30%, that's, that's kind of like what you would pay uh, your credit card. You know, that... Uh, that's those are very very high interest rates so all your money will be gone just paying interest imagine if Greece borrowed you know 20% of its GDP at this absurd rate then it could never pay that money back I mean how that would mean that they'd have to grow at incredible rates to keep their head above water so th th you, this is an example of the fact that you do get inverted yield curves. It's a very bad setup because banks then can't operate. They can't borrow money at the short, short end and lend at the long end. So normally they would borrow at the lowest interest rate to, to customers who want money for longer periods of time and so they pay higher interest rates and the banks keep making money. If you have the inverted yield curve, then the banks are stuck. Also, inverted yield curves are used as a predictor of recessions. So if you suddenly see that the yield curve is inverted, then a lot of the market will feel very uncomfortable. That's the bond market telling the stock market, because remember the bond market's a lot bigger than the stock market. The bond market saying, actually, there's a lot of trouble ahead. And now you know, you know, the, uh, if you didn't know about yield curves and uh, bond markets. Well, we're here we're just gonna look at two classes of models, which are, or which we use when we're trying to model interest rates. The first class are equilibrium models. So there, just like we talked about in our lesson on the menu models that we have, the first one is a log normal model. Very much like we use when we're, we were modeling shares before. So you have the change, dr in the interest rate, has a trend term, mu dt, plus a noise term, sigma dz. And they're both proportional to r. So they both have an r term, which is why they're log normal. So this one is known as the Rendleman and Barter model. Next, we want to kind of 
add a bit more complexity since that captures what we're modeling better. So then we have the mean reversion model. dr is a times b minus r dt plus sigma dz. Note here we don't have a r dz. So the noise term isn't log normal. The noise term is just normally distributed. Oh, and this is called the Vazicek model. The a times b minus r dt is the, the mean reversion term. So what that means is that when the interest rate is very high, or higher than b, then this trend term is negative. So then we expect interest rates to now be heading down. If the interest rate is very low, as in lower than b, then this is positive. So we expect future changes to be positive. Which, that's your typical mean reversion behavior. And that's also economically a good typical model. That, that, that's how the economy and interest rates normally behave. Finally, we have a non-negative model. Since we, we don't typically have negative interest rates except for a handful of um, odd times. So there we have the same as the mean reversion. dr is a times b, b minus r dt, but we have sigma the square root of r dz. Now r is a real number, so if r were to be negative, then we'd have the square root of a negative number. And there is, we, you can't have the square root of a negative number. If all the numbers we're talking about are real numbers. So that's even more complex, or it's a better model. It captures loads of uh, properties that are good. This is a mean reverting model, which is typically how interest rates move or behave, and the interest rate remains positive. And that's called the Cox, Ingersoll, and Ross model. These do not fit the actual yield curve. So say I, I gave you parameters, mu, sigma, blah, blah, and you did a simulation. Well, you actually you have actual yield curves. You have what the interest rate is in six months or a year. So, if we if you use a model where your interest rate is just a random potential future, that in no way is related to reality. Now by picking a b and sigma we we can adjust the shape of the yield curve that we're creating so if we know that at the moment we've got an inverted yield curve well then we pick a b and sigma to produce the correct shape so at least that way the realities, the worlds in which are, or the worlds which our model is simulating is close to the real one. So the results it gives are more, or worth something. But even though we can fit the yield curve to the actual, or we can fit our model to the actual yield curve, a 1% error in the bond price can lead to a 25% error in an option price. So traders are not very big believers or they don't have much faith in the output from these kind of models since they don't really, they provide arbitrage opportunities since the yield curve according to these models is maybe close to the real one, but they're not 
correct, they're not exact. So that leads to no arbitrage models. So there we actually feed in the yield curve data into our models so that they agree. So there's no arbitrage opportunities, which is why they're called no arbitrage models. Here we begin with actually a normal model. We have dr is equal to theta of t dt plus sigma dz, which is called the Ho-Lee model. You can see that it's normally distributed because it doesn't have a r dt or an r sigma here. You know, it's um, yeah, it's not geometrically distributed. The changes are not proportional to the value of r. Likewise, we have the mean reversion model, and there we don't have a r dz. You know, there's no. This is not. This is not log normal. The mean reverting term, where well, we have theta of t minus a r, that 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 at least has an r in it, but you know the noise term isn't, and that's called the whole white model. Finally, we have a non-negative model, and here we have d of log r is theta t minus a of t log r dt plus sigma d sigma t dz. The difference here is before we kept it positive by using a square root of r, while here we're using log of r, and log of r is ne never negative. So that keeps things positive, which is the which was our objective here. Note that this is log normal, because it's d of log of r. So we need to log both sides then to get r and so this is the noise term is normal but now we take the log of a normal distribution hence it would be log normal and that's called the black karasinki model the essential difference between equilibrium and no arbitrage models is that the yield curve is an output from equilibrium models so we, we, we set A, B, and sigma, and then we generate yield curves. While it is an input to no arbitrage models. Well, this is a quick look at the complexities of interest rate models and how they differ from share prices or the other things we've looked at so far. In fact, there is even greater complexity um, where we try and allow variation in volatility. But those models are typically more academically used just to try and study things because they are more complicated. They take a lot longer to compute. but they're more accurate. So that's our quick look at equilibrium and no arbitrage models.